ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the stage, Ambrose Uren. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Good evening. Good evening, good evening, Raptorum. How are you guys doing? Oh, so nice to see you all here. Beautiful faces and smiles and nice fresh haircuts. I can smell the, what is that, spirits in the air. I love it. It's beautiful. You guys found the place okay? Raptor Room, yeah? You guys, you guys like the venue? Yeah? Nice? Nice spot. Give it up for Alta Abside. He's my, he's my brother. Brother from another mother, man. Got each one put one on. That's how we do. Hi there. Hi. How are you? You good, Rekha? I didn't even see you guys earlier. So many familiar faces. It's lovely. Someone asked me, where, where is the venue? Ambers, where is the venue? Raptor room, where is it? I said, there where they protest, man. They're in the protest road. And they went, oh, okay. Yeah, I know. I know. Parliament, no, is there. Just go look for the placards. Did you see the placards in the front? They got those for in case when you leave, if there's a protest, then you can just take one and pass on. That's how we do. Oh, it's nice to be here, man. Relax, chill, kick back. Everyone been having a good December? Is December's going good so far? Summertime? <coughs> Lovely. Now I just have to check in, man. What happened? You okay? You guys having a good time? Lovely. Lovely, man. Now I'm, I'm glad you guys came through. I'm really happy uh, that you guys made it, especially there's such a full house. It's beautiful to see, you know, especially in a time like this, you know. With petrol be being as expensive as it is, it's really difficult to come out. So I understand every drop of every liter of petrol you spend is won't be wasted tonight, guys. Won't be wasted. I know how difficult it is. Petrol, oh brother, can we agree that it's expensive? It's too much right now. Too much. You can't even do the two trips anymore. Remember the two trips, guys, when you had like a family function and only one uncle has a car. <laughs> and then uncle must start counting you. Okay, right. Um, Okay, I'll take off of you and then I'll come back and I'll do two trips, I'll do two trips. 2019, ah, uh -uh, that uncle is gone, sister. You, <laughs> you must WhatsApp him, where is Peter? Where did he go? No, he left two o'clock already early. Doesn't want to do two trips, that's why. Doesn't want to do. So I'm glad you guys made it. Even if you squeezed in seven people in a city golf, I'm, I appreciate that, I know the feeling. <laughs> You remember those times when that uncle can't do the two trips anymore? Everyone have to squeeze in, squeeze. You have to get into the car like Tetris. One's in a T, <laughs> one's in a L, <laughs> one's in a circle. <laughs> oh, it's rough times, bro. rough times, you know. And then there's always that one auntie that's so grateful she got a lift, isn't it? The car's already full, you can hardly breathe. She's sitting on your lap, you can hardly breathe. And then there's one auntie, she's sitting there going, yeah, no? where there's a world, there's a way. <laughs> It's about you make a way for your own transport. <laughs> Don't do the two trips anymore, bruh. But it was, it was cheaper. Now, remember when petrol was cheaper? Like five rand, seven rand a liter. Good times. But not for everyone, though. When it was that cheap, it was during apartheid. So if you're a person of color, you can afford a full tank, but you can't go anywhere. You have to stay. That was... That was petty of them, wasn't it petty of them? A bit petty. <laughs> Fill up full tank, but you must stay in your area. Just don't go there where they are. They, you know the day, you know. 20th of November was the day. 20th of November, 1986. Nelson Mandela was uh, at the time in Paul's Moore prison, guys. Paul's Moore prison, he was watching a documentary called the things I cannot change. <laughs> How ironic for them to put on a film for Nelson Mandela called The Things You Cannot Change, brother. <laughs> and on that very same day, I was born in a hospital in Mowbray. These are the things I cannot change. <laughs> born and raised on the Cape Flats, Bontyville, Mitchell's Plain. If you hear, go whoop whoop, yeah. <laughs> That's right, man. I have to tell people I'm from the k -Flats. I tell them I'm proud now because there's too many negative things going on. You know, if you a bit of positive, you have to tell people where you're from. You know, I tell them I'm from the k -Flats. People always go, why you have to tell us? I say, because I'm, I'm proud, you know? Kind of like how vegans have to tell you they're vegan, <laughs> you know? <laughs> if you met a vegan, they have to tell you. That otherwise, you can't sleep at night if I, you know? 
you have to know so that you can chill, you know? So, so I, that's how I feel about, you know, being from the Cape Flats. And also, by the way, I'm actually also vegan. Just, <laughs> just get that out there. <laughs> I'll talk more about that in a second. Lots of stereotypes on the Cape Flats, bruh. Whole life you're fighting stereotypes. Always trying to be different, trying to be someone that, you know, people have this image of you. If you come from somewhere, this is how you must be, man. I've the whole, my whole life I've been fighting that. Every day when I wake up, I have to do a mantra, guys. Ten times I have to do a mantra, look myself in the mirror and say, there is nothing wrong with being from the Cape Flats. Every day I wake up, look in the mirror, splash my face. There is nothing wrong with being from the Cape Flats. Pull myself together, say it one more time. There is nothing wrong with being from the Cape Flats. And then I go outside, sister, face the world, and then I see all the gang violence. Ah, run back inside. There is something wrong with them. I think there's something wrong with them out there. So that's hard. You guys don't understand if you're not from there. It's rough, bruh, tell them. <laughs> so you have to just, you know, kind of be strong if you're a person of color, especially for well, all of us right now, man. As you know, ESCOM is just switching us off at any point. I'm just glad that they kept us on tonight. That's all I can be thankful for, man. But I grew up, like I said, Mitchell's Plain. It was a nice area. Um, Morgan Stair, you know, that's where I grew up, you know. There was a guy in our area, you know, I always felt it for him because he wasn't so 100% upstairs, you know what I mean? And he was always in the area just walking around barefoot. You know, every community has a guy like this. Our guy's name was Jaimpi. Jaimpi's every day is walking around doing his thing. You ask your mommy, mommy, Jaimpi, what's wrong? Mommy goes, ah, he's, he's all right, he won't hurt anyone, man. Jaimpi's fine, just leave him. So one day we're playing in the parking lot right of this mall where, where, behind where I stayed. And we on our bicycles and we, you know, doing our thing, our tricks in the parking lot. And here comes Jaimpi, guys. <laughs> Jaimpi's pretending this day to drive around his imaginary car in the parking lot, right? But we know us disturbing him, we're watching him, he's full on K53. I think he was passing out because <laughs> he had the technicalities down, you know, rear view mirror, blind spot, blind spot, indicate, and there he goes, you know. <laughs> And Jaimpi's in between the cars and we're watching Jaimpi. Okay, for Jaimpi, check Jaimpi out. Jaimpi doesn't care, he's in between passing cars, you know. Eventually Jaimpi decides he's gonna park his car and he's gonna go do some shopping inside the shop, right, guys? <laughs> Dead serious, right? In character, he's there, skirt, parks the car, boom, slams the pow! Sound effects, everything. <laughs> As he does that, there's a car god, guys, chilling with us, just watching Jaimpi, just. <laughs> And now, and you can just imagine what the car guard's thinking, you know? What kind of tip am I gonna get from this? <laughs> this doesn't look right, man. Do you think Jaimpi cares? Jaimpi don't care. Jaimpi puts on his alarm, blip, blip, for safety. Goes into the shop, right, right? Goes into that little mall, right? Guys, he comes out. Ten minutes later, we're waiting for Jaimpi outside. Where is he? Where is he? He's like, there's Jaimpi, there's Jaimpi. Jaimpi comes out with imaginary shopping bags, guys. Swinging the bags like it was, like some of you looked on Black Friday. I saw you on the videos. Swinging it. <laughs> Gets to his car, this is when it goes, are you, are you, are you, what, haywire? Points at the car, God goes, brother, you were right there. I saw you there when I was parking. Where is my car? He's upset, guys. Where is my car? I saw you right there, brother. He's so upset. He drops the bags. <laughs> milk spills everywhere, guys. It's milk. <laughs> but the car god was relaxed. The car god kept his composure, you know. He's thinking to himself, Jaimpi, Jaimpi, Jaimpi. I tried to tell you, my bro. But you parked in a towaway zone, brother man. Come on, Jaimpi man. Let's play along, guys. Let's play along, Jaimpi man. You know what I mean? That was Mitchell's plan, Bontyville though. Bontyville. Anyone from Bontyville here? Whoop whoop. Yeah, okay, two of you, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All three, okay. <laughs> Bontyville's in the house. That's where, I, that's where I learned to b-boy, guys. That's where I learned to break dance, man. You know what break dancing is, b-boying? No? 
Anyone? There's some b-boys in the house, they know what it is. It's dancing, it's a dance form. I know not a lot of you guys know it because a lot of people hate on b-boys, especially the security guards. The security guards don't like to see us dance. That's one thing, they're always beefing against b-boys. So I can understand if you don't know it, but I've been one since 1999, guys. That's when I started dancing. No, don't cheer, it's different now. I'm older, it's different. It's not the same. <laughs> 1999, I was limber, I was loose. And that was, that was, at that time, I was, you know, I was flexible, I was into dance, you know, anything, nothing could stop me. You know? <laughs> I remember one day in Grahamstown, now called Makanda Forever, <laughs> I was uh, standing in the line, you know, the teacher's doing the roll call, and obviously I'm Ambrose Uren, so I'm you at the back, you know. <laughs> I'm waiting my turn, you know, and the other guys are already in, and she says, Ambrose, I go present, but I slide in and I start dancing immediately. <laughs> and the whole crowd is, you know, class is going whoop, 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 whoop. And that teacher turned red like a beetroot sister. She was standing there going, gentlemen, 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 can we calm down, please? Ambrose, you immediately go to the office. You have detention. It was the first day of school, guys. <laughs> but I was so happy just to dance. I said, okay, fine, miss. Oh, let's play the beat. Oh, boom, I, danced. I danced out of the room, bro. <laughs> I was like, nah, I'm not gonna, they couldn't stop me, they couldn't. But I'm lucky I started dancing, I'm really grateful for dance. I will never trade that for the world, man. All the b-boys sitting in there. My b-boys, give it up for the b-boys over there. Yeah, man. These guys put the bodies on the line, like WWE. <laughs> but more real, more real. Not the fake slaps, they do the real thing. But dancing, this is why I say I'm grateful for dancing, man. Like, it's really taken me, you know, around the world. That's one thing I can be truly thankful for. So if ever your kids want to do dancing, just let them do it, man. There's opportunities. I've been all over. I was in China. The first place I went to was Korea. Korea, beautiful. I had chicken and beer for the first time. That's what they do. That's like, a, they, that's their pop and wars. <laughs> chicken and beer. Then it took me to China. China was really nice. Learned to eat chopsticks, learned the culture. Then it took me to Europe. And just one month ago, actually, it, uh, it took me to the chiropractor. <laughs> like I said, 33 years old. <laughs> That's where I've been going recently for my dancing, guys. It's, it hasn't been that easy, huh? <laughs> no, it gets harder, man. It gets harder. You can't just keep going and going. That's one thing I learned. You can't just keep going through dance, you have to chill. At some point I had to tell myself, you need to chill now on the dancing, you know? So now I use dance more as a de-stress. Just to de-stress. You like that word, sister? De-stress. I dance to de-stress, man. I feel like we need de-stress these days in our lives. Guys, if you don't have a de-stressor, then you are probably stressing. <laughs> like, you, do you guys have de-stressors? Let me find out. Do you have, a, do you have something you, that you de-stress with, sir? You go to gym, you see, that's a nice de-stressor gym. Sister, what do you do? Yoga. yoga, beautiful, the lovely yoga, liquor. That's, sister, and you? You drink, okay, fantastic. <laughs> that's the South African answer right there. We drink. Yes. <laughs> you know what's cool though, something that the two of you would like, I heard they have something called beer yoga. That's beer yoga, sister. Now you can get flexible and drunk at the same time. <laughs> I thought, what next, guys? What next? Beer yoga. How far are they going to push these things, man? Where are they going to take it next, huh? Cocaine karate. Is that the next one? Is that? <laughs> you just hit a line and then halla! Just bring on the next one. Halla! <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. But you need to de-stress. This is tough times. If you don't have your balance in these times, I don't know. You know what I mean? Everyone's, everyone's panicking. Everyone's... You know, which way, which direction, what's, what's happening next in South Africa? We don't know. That's the worrying thing, isn't it? Everyone's nervous. We don't know ANC, what's going on. It's all in shambles. One out of four people are unemployed right now, guys. Isn't that mad? One out of four people are unemployed. That's rough stats. And then the other three out of four people are overworked. We live in a weird country. Don't you feel like that's weird? We are a country of unemployed, overworked people. How does that even, 
That doesn't make sense. And at the same time, ESCOM with all these cuts, I feel like ESCOM is giving the overworked people a break. Just, you know, just take some load shedding, take some time off. In fact, here's stage eight, here's stage eight. Just relax. <laughs> just de-stress. You know what I mean? It's really, uh, oof, it's really rough out there, bruh. SAA, look what happened. SAA people lost their jobs. Half of the, you know, the staff lost their job. They only kept the pilots. <laughs> That's weird, right? Only the pilot, you only, the one, one guy gonna do all the work of everyone. What's that? How's that pilot gonna do things? Gonna take tickets in the front? Hi there, welcome, welcome. Yeah, 22C, that's to the left. Thank you, let me see, that's 22B, yeah, to the right. Welcome, how are you? Yes, uh, 15E to the left. Uh, excuse me, guys, can you just wait in the line? I just have to go start the plane quickly, just... <laughs> <laughs> how does that work? That doesn't even make sense. One out of four people unemployed right now, and at the same time, we're still having Black Friday sales. <laughs> Guys, who's buying? <laughs> Country of unemployed people, and we have Black Friday sales, and the malls are full, like the, you know. That was weird, and you know what was very interesting was that the news was promoting it, you know what I mean? Like the news was promoting it. I watched the news, the news reporter came out, she said, Okay, so guys, this is what you're gonna need if you're gonna go Black Friday shopping, okay? You're gonna need your sneakers, your trainers, wear something comfy, you know? Something that you can run in, in case of the stampedes, and then also you have a backpack for the excess uh, stuff, because we all have so much money. You're gonna get excess, and then a nice big trolley. <laughs> I'm thinking, this is the same news reporter that's reporting at the end of the scene of the crime. She's standing there going, Guys, it is chaos in the mall right now. Look at what's happening. People are trampling each other. At least they're wearing comfy shoes. <laughs> the same news reporter. <laughs> but they're just making us spend out. Don't you feel like they're just making us spend? They just want us to spend? I mean, not you guys tonight. This is nice. This is, I like. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not part of it, I, I promise. But. <laughs> This is making you spend, this, they have all these new things for people to spend their money on. What's this new one? First Thursdays, did you hear your First Thursdays? They got this day called First Thursdays now where the youngsters come out and you know, you go wild and you spend your money. I must not go spend my money because someone said it's Thursday. <laughs> no guys, come on, no, 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 no. Uh -uh. I can't get down with this. You know, my friends and I, we've decided we don't do that anymore. We don't, we do another day, brother. It's, uh, it's called Next Thursday. It's <laughs> if you ask me, you're going no, first Thursday? Nah, bro. Nah, I'm cool. I'm, I'm going next Thursday. I'm fine. <laughs> the drinks are cheaper. <laughs> uh, oh, man. That's rough. That's really, South Africa's very confusing right now. You know? And you know, here's the thing, like, you, even in your relationship, you have to survey everything, like, you know, your past, your present. You know, where do you find the balance in between this? I think it's very important that we just take care of ourselves, you know, in all this time. Because it's very easy for your mind to snap, lose it. <coughs> and then look now, you're not another JMP out there doing your thing. Like, <laughs> no, just leave him. They're talking to you about you like that. Just leave him. He's all right. <coughs> nah, man, you got to take care of yourselves, guys. You know, a lot of people are looking for themselves, looking for their identity these days. A lot of people are looking for identity. Um, one of my friends said, Ambrose, if you, you know, if you don't know what you are, you must just, there's sources everywhere, you know? Because everyone's talking about, I'm 20% this, 50% that, you know, if you ask, what's your mix? I heard someone say the other day, no, I'm 30% Italian and 70% Khoisan. I said, okay, that's quiet. <laughs> say, Ambrose, what are you? I said, I'm 50% my mom and 50% my dad. <laughs> I, that's as far as I know so far. <laughs> Uh, what are you all chopping yourself into little pieces for? Just keep yourself a whole human being. How's about that? You know what I mean? Everyone's trying to chop themselves up. But someone said, no, Ambrose, you need to go uh, find your history. Go ch check out the research. They said, go try the uh, slavery museum. Oof. I said, oh, okay. Uh, that's a bit of a wild suggestion, but okay. Let me go see what's happening at the slavery museum. I went in there, guys. Oof. It's rough. It's as rough as you think. As you think, have you ever been in there, any of you? No? 
Whew, if you were a person of color, man, you need to be strong. First thing I, I walked in there, the first thing I heard was the song, Senzenina, 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 Senzenina. You know that song? You guys know what it means, right? Who knows what it means? Anyone, anyone, young people especially. <laughs> what have we done? What have we done? And I hear that song in the one room, so I go in there, Senzenina. I go, look what's happening. And I see the photos, 1976, the riots, I see everything. First thing I realized that none of our ancestors, none of the old people in those photos were ready for the photo shoot firstly. <laughs> it's like, could they not have told them there's a photographer on the day firstly? It's, a, it's horrific. It was a horrific in there, guys. It's the first thing I realized, this is a horrific museum. I feel like if you are a person of color, you should have a therapist as you enter. They must have a therapist. This is Sarah. She's going to be with you for the trip. <laughs> so that when you see these photos, you know, and you start breaking down, Sarah can just start rubbing your back. Okay, there, there. <laughs> How does that make you feel? <laughs> a slavery museum. I, doesn't, I don't know how to feel about a slavery museum, guys. You know, just because we had slavery, doesn't mean we need a slavery museum. Is that you, are you with me? Just because we have slavery don't mean, it's like I'm from the Cape Flats, right? Just because there's robberies on the Cape Flats doesn't mean we need a robbery museum. Do you understand the logic behind that? You know what I mean? Like there's no such thing as a robbery museum. Do you know what, I, you guys know what I mean? Are you with me? You look a bit, no, because, okay. Fine, maybe there's one robbery museum. I know some of you are looking. Maybe there's one, I think it's called Cash Crusaders. I think that's... That <laughs> Cash Crusaders is a robbery. Guys, that's a robbery museum. Have you ever walked in there and seen something that was yours? I'm like, that's... Look at that, that's my radio right there. It's still on the station that I left it on. 94.5, <laughs> what a... <laughs> Robbery museum, guys. Mm -mm. Am I allowed to? I'm just gonna take a sip of water. That's fine with you guys. While you think about the robbery museum, <laughs> madness. I don't know, man. Robbery museums. But I, I mean, I was born in '86, so I I kind of have that a bit of an old feel. But I also know where the youngsters are going. You know, like I feel confused almost. Like I'm from the old, but I also. I have a lot of friends who are internet guys and computer guys. You know, the new school, you know? And sometimes I wish we could collide the two. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'll tell you now what I mean. <laughs> don't you guys sometimes feel like, don't you sometimes wish that like, we had Facebook during apartheid? <laughs> I wish we had, guys, if we had Facebook during apartheid, we could have, you know, sped up the process a bit quicker, you know, like we could have improved on some things, you know. I would, I would have enjoyed particularly Facebook because I would have been that, but I'm checking in to all the whites only places. <laughs> but I'm not there, I'm just checking in online, so they look for me in the restaurant. Where is he? He checked in. Go look in the toilet, go look in the toilet. <laughs> just check in, I'm not there. Taking selfies in front of the whites only photos, you're like, ah, you know, tag white people in a tag, 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 shame. Can you imagine a time if we had that? Can you imagine Nelson Mandela checks into Robben Island? <laughs> All the white politicians like, 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 share, like, like. <laughs> I come from that time. I can't, I can't not imagine these things, guys. Imagine the statuses. Imagine the statuses you would have seen during that time. <sighs> Stuck in the middle of town. It's late and I forgot my dom pass at home. <laughs> Hashtag epic fail. <laughs> oh, terrible status. Throwback Thursday, what would that have been like? The bars gave us free wine, the Owens posing with the wine. Throwback Thursday. <laughs> Little did they know that's the only pay they're getting, that's easy or pay. That's a tough throwback Thursday, you know? And you know on Facebook you have people watching things, you know, Nelson Mandela in 86 would have been watching the things I cannot change. You know, feeling sad at the same time. <coughs> I then that final status, man. If the clerk had a status, you know, that would have killed me. The last white president of the country, for those who aren't from here, F.W. the clerk. 
that would have killed me, man. He would have, his status would have been something like, today we are handing over the country to the ANC, feeling sad. <laughs> Hashtag not cool. <laughs> And then you'd see the comments, you know, Nelson Mandela probably would have commented somewhere in there, you know, in the top few comments. Just three letters, L-O-L. -L. <laughs> and then way down, way down further would have been Jacob Zuma, show me the money. I'm like, oh, oh no, that wouldn't have worked out. That would, <laughs> it would not have worked out, bruh. But that's the thing, man, we can't really lose track of, you know, where we're going these days. The past is always rough. Like, I had some moments back in the days, man. I, I was in Joburg for three years, guys. Anyone here been to Joburg? Anyone from Joburg? Joburg is where you at? No? Okay, but we talk about them. It's fine. <laughs> That's fine. I was in Joburg for three years. It was a rough time. The one thing that was nice about Joburg was that they had traffic light entertainment. That was very nice. Joburg has traffic light. Guys, Cape Town, you don't know what traffic light entertainment is. What do we have? What do we have? Nachis, aux cables, <laughs> smash and grabs. That's not entertaining. That's not really, you know what I mean? In Joburg, bro, you pull up to the traffic light, a whole Pansula crew come out, what's that? <laughs> ta 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 ta, ra ta ta ta, put the air, it's so para. And they're juggling crates at the same time. Hop, time it, crate, time it, time it. Ta ra ra ta ta ra ta ta ta. They always do that pose. <laughs> I'm in the car going, whoo, just like you guys, oh, putting on my wipers, <laughs> shooting the water out. <laughs> it's entertaining, guys. What can I say? It's super entertaining. And then the guys come to the window, you know. Oh, that's always the sad part. <laughs> It's like, I never know what to say, man. <laughs> Guy came to the window like, ah, oh, bro, you got any tips there? I'm like, yo, bro, I'm not a pansula dancer. No. <laughs> but I think you should just believe in yourself. Believe in yourself. <laughs> Follow your dreams. And you can make it, you can make it. But it's very competitive at the traffic lights even. Competitive. People are outperforming each other at the traffic lights. At the, the, you know, the pansulas are at the one spot. Another spot, there's a guy doing double backflips, guys. Trying to show them a thing. Double backflips. He's there just standing there. When you pull up to the traffic light, he'll just stand there. And then he'll give you, he'll give you that little nod. How do you do? And then he'll set up his arm, shoop, as you know, it's going to go down. <laughs> and then he'll just, whoop, double back for the pow, and he'll land like that. But he maintains the eye contact right away, <laughs> all around. And when he lands, he's still there with you. <laughs> then another car will pull up, and he'll do the same thing. Shoop, double back for the pow. And I'm like, yo, this guy is rough, because he had that big calves. He was on an incline even, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Was it, I was like, yo, this guy is really intense. And then he, he picks up his sign. The sign says, extremely hungry. <laughs> I'm thinking to myself, yo, bra, maybe if you do one less backflip, <laughs> you won't be, you'll be slightly hungry, not extremely. <laughs> backflip is a lot of work, guys. <laughs> it's, I know, I'm a dancer, that's rough. Double backflip, no. You're overperforming, brother. <laughs> I don't think it's necessary to go that hard. <laughs> Double backflips. Now, Joburg was wild, bruh. But Joburg, you, the climb there is on a next level. On a next level. I heard the story, guys. A community broke into, you know, they didn't break in, they were doing raids, you know. Raiding these drug lords' houses and they kicked down the one drug lords' house. We say, they said, we know there's drugs in here. We want the drugs. They burst in the doors and when they w walked into the rooms, they didn't find any drugs. Not a single drug around. All they found, guys, was used coffins. <laughs> Which leads me to believe that there's a guy in Joburg selling used coffins like City Golf, guys. He's just out there, guys. This is a 2018 coffin, right? Okay, <laughs> freshly dug out. Just check the handles, they're still fine. 
has got even a security locking for the closed casket. We can refurbish the interior. Come on, these deals are to die for, but I, I don't know how it goes, but this is what I think. This is how I think it goes. I don't know how we sell them, but I was like shocked, you know? The level of criminality has just gone up and up and up. You know? It's a bit scary, isn't it? You think like people don't care anymore. And we had signs of this, guys. It's not even like it's new. You know what I mean? In 2015, I remember, shame, this poor guy. They mugged a news reporter, guys. I don't know if you saw this. On live television. <laughs> As he was reporting the news, they robbed him as he was. I was like, this is the highest level of criminal right here. <laughs> These guys aren't scared. They aren't scared. They literally came on live TV to do like a workshop robbery <laughs> to show everyone, <laughs> this is how you do it, okay? This is how we're gonna do a live. But I felt so sorry for the, you know, the guy behind the mic. Poor Vuyo, you know? Cause you know, the, in, on the news, they have the studio, they have the news guys, the, the anchor. And then they have the weather lady. They're all safe in the studio, you know? <laughs> but then there's the guy out there in the field. That guy's on his own, all, the, all alone in the crime of the scene. He's at the, the crime of the, the scene of the crime, <laughs> saying it wrong. He's just out there on his own. And on this day, they were like, uh, over to you, Vuyo. Vuyo standing there. Uh, guys, this is, uh, this is not a really a good time to call right now. Can you call back in five minutes, please? V Vuyo, what's happening? What, uh, it seems like, are you being robbed right now? Yes, uh, I think, yeah, that's exactly what's happening. Um, I can confirm that we are being robbed. Um, yeah, so like I said, if we could just end this right now. No, but Vuyo, is everything in order? Is, is, uh, I can confirm that everything is not in order. <laughs> Definitely not in order. Um, they seem to want my cell phone. Um, in fact, they're taking my cell phone, there it goes. There goes my oh, there goes my watch as well. Okay, well, um, yeah, I think they want the mic as well, so we're gonna have to, uh, we're gonna have to go now. Over to you, Robbers. There we go. <laughs> Guys, who does this? I was, I thought of that. The, the level of criminality. That's the highest level that you can get. I was like, who comes to a scene of a crime to do another crime, guys? What, ki what type of level of criminality is this? That's high level, isn't it? That's high level, man. But that's why I say some things, you just have to just brush it off. If you get like bad news, just brush it off, man. Brush it off and keep moving, stay balanced. That's the only way we need to take care of ourselves, guys. We all go through turmoil, go through rough times, but we need to take care of ourselves, you know? I had an ex-girlfriend, man. Yo, uh, I've been through some rough things also, guys. I was in a relationship for seven years with someone, you know, and then you, gr you grow close to someone, you know how it goes, you know. Love is in the air and you're young and, and then heartbreak comes around, oh, that heartbreak. But it wasn't like, it wasn't bad, you know, it was, I, I met this girl, things were cool and she just surprised me one day, you know. Every relationship has its ups and downs. One day I'm at the gate, you know, she calls me around, she says, Ambrose, I need to talk to you go to her house, she's standing behind the gate, and, um, but the gate has like those green net on, the green, you know the green net? <laughs> <laughs> to keep the dust out, cause it's the dusty streets of, it's the things we cannot change guys, these are the things, <laughs> the dusty streets. It's, she had the green net there, you know, she's behind the net. I can't see her really, I'm like, what's wrong, I'm trying to open. She's like, no wait, stay that side. I just want you to know if this gate opens that I'm still the same person and you know, I hope you don't judge me. And she opens the gate and I see guys that she pulled her four front teeth. <laughs> All her incisors, her four incisors. Now firstly, stereotypes are stereotypes, right? That's the one thing. But at the time I was like, you know what? That's not even a thing, that's fine. Cause we were in love, right? And I believe love guys is stronger than front teeth. <laughs> Anyone agree with me? Thank you, that's one clap. No, for real, you know? So I was, I was like, you know, it's fine. We were still together for three years after that. You know, even though it did leave a big gap in the relationship, so. Was. <laughs> I need a sip of water for that joke. Traumatic past. 
Yeah, man. But yeah, these are, these are fun times still. Nevertheless, fun times. Fun, fun, fun. You guys might just keep having, just enjoy yourselves, man. Enjoy yourselves. There's all these stories we hear in the Cape Fest, all these stories. Sometimes it's more funny than anything, right? Sometimes it's more funny. I was one day, I was at the tuck shop, you know, buying bread, sweets with the change, you know how things go, and I feel this tapping on my shoulder. <laughs> I'm like, okay, I, I hope it's not JMP. <laughs> but I now I look back, there's a guy standing behind me going, brother, come here, my bro. You know what that means? Trouble. First thing I noticed, he had a loose tooth. <laughs> I don't know if you guys ever spoken to anyone with like a loose tooth. You can't focus on anything else except the, you know. I could tell which direction the wind was blowing. Just, just from the tooth, I was like, ooh, that's a southeaster right there. But he was, you know, adamant, brother. I said, brother, you want to buy a kettle, my bro? <laughs> Thinking a kettle? I don't have time for this now. Man. <laughs> but you never know when you can get a Black Friday sale. You know? <laughs> I stand there and I'm like, okay, cool. Okay, fine. Let me see the kettle, bro. Let me see. Take out the kettle, let me see the kettle. <laughs> Takes out the kettle, guys. The first thing I notice, I'm like, but I hear still steam coming out of this kettle. <laughs> Full on clouds of steam coming out of the kettle, but you know what he said? He looked me dead in the eye and he said, away bro, get it while it's hot. I'm like, <laughs> ignorance, that's what I call it. <laughs> mm -mm. Yeah, no. But these are, yeah, it's fun, it's fun, man. You guys, are you guys trying to at least, you know, stay healthy on the healthy track? Anyone? No? No one have summer body goals? <laughs> no summer body goals, man. Oh, you need to spoil yourself, bro. You know, get that, get that six pack on. I don't know. <laughs> Do that beer yoga or something, you know? No, I, I um, guys, I want to tell you something. Uh, I'm very happy right now, man. I, I recently got back in, in a relationship. I got, I'm in a relationship. Uh, it's nice. I see some not excited at all. That's fine. <laughs> Guys are just like, yeah, whatever, but uh, whatever. We're all in relationships. <laughs> I'm new, okay? You just have some excitement for me, too. You know? But the relationship is nice. Uh, she's, she's French. She's French. She's from France. Yeah, I know a lot of you thinking, ooh, la la, you know. <laughs> Some of you thinking, oh, but what, what do you have in common, you know? It's, we have a lot in common, guys. We have a couple of things in common, you know. Uh, we both like wine, that's a good thing, I guess, you know. The French, they brought the wine here, and you know, South Africans, you know, with all our problems, we like the wine, here we go, you know, we drink the wine. Uh, but we do have different things, she's into white wine, you know, I myself, I just, I, I'm into any wine, it doesn't matter. <laughs> just. No, because when it comes to my wines, uh, I don't see color, guys, that's the thing. <laughs> I don't see, I don't have time. <laughs> but it's, it's good, it's been good times. We recently went to Zanzibar, guys. You ever been to Zanzibar? Zanzibar's a nice place. You must try and go, don't just go Europe and all that. Try Zanzibar, it's liquor. Very nice. I heard they got milk of papaya out there. I don't know what milk of papaya is. I've never seen one. I don't know how you squeeze the milk out of a papaya. I didn't know you could do that. But apparently they have that out there. But it's for the sea urchins though. If you step on a sea urchin, you can put some milk of papaya and then you know. That's what I found out before I went. But then when I got there, I saw oh, it's a beautiful place. But it's not like the brochure though. Very different from the brochure. You know, on the brochure, they always show the empty beaches, you know, white sands, just two people walking there in the distance. <laughs> and then when you get to the beach, the whole Tanzania is there at the same time. Like, oh, come on. Why is everyone here at the same time? Like, you know, you can't just do that romantic walk with your girl. You think you're just gonna, uh-uh. They've got beach boys in Zanzibar, guys. You know what a beach boy is? It's not like a, a band, beach boy band. It's not like the same thing. 
Beach boys, guys, are men who sell you holiday packages while you are already on a holiday package. <laughs> it doesn't make no sense. And they just pop up like YouTube ads, like those ones you can't skip. <laughs> they just keep talking and talking. And they have multiple jobs. They tell you they have multiple jobs. Multiple jobs. I met this guy called Captain Harun. Captain Harun. He told me he's a captain of a ship. I saw him every day on the shore, not once on a ship. <laughs> Captain Harun, very charming guy, you know. He's like, yo, guys, ladies and gents, you saw me and my girl walking, you know, popped up like a YouTube ad. Do you need help with your spelling? Try Grammarly. <laughs> Some of you get it. <laughs> like, okay, Captain Harun, how are you doing? He's like, guys, can I interest you in an ocean safari? <laughs> We're like, oh, you know what, Captain Harun? Uh, my girl and I, we're actually just here to chill. Uh, but what is an ocean safari? No, actually, it's a tour. We take you on the trip of the island. You know, you get to see the different islands where the papaya, milk of papaya is grown. You know, we take you on the tour of the big five of our oceans. I said, big five of your oceans? What's the big five? He said, the sea lion, the sea buffalo. I said, stop right there. <laughs> That's definitely a lie. I said, bruh, please leave us. We, we're really cool. We just want to be left alone, you know? That's when he changed job, job positions right there. He said, listen, brother, I'm also a chef, man. Before you go, I'm also a chef. I can do you a seafood barbecue, brother. Seafood barbecue right here on the beach. We got lobster, we got crayfish, we got calamari shrimp. What do you like? I said, brother, I'm vegan. I'm fine, you know. He says, okay, fine, fair enough. Then I said, brother, please, can we, can we just go? We don't, wanna, we don't wanna be hassled anymore. Right then and there, he takes out a scissor, points at him. I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. That's where I knew, okay, I jump in front of my girlfriend. I'm like, brother, listen, I'm from Cape Town. <laughs> and if we're gonna do this, there might be some things I cannot change. <laughs> and I left it to him, but then he was like, no, brother, I'm actually also a barber. I wanted to cut your hair. I was like, oh, phew. <laughs> <sighs> thank goodness, bro, because I, I thought it was gonna get real right now, you know? But that was beautiful. Zanzibar was nice, you know, me and my girl just there, having our veggie meals, <laughs> just vegging out. I know a lot of you guys are not smiling for the veggie pots. You know, what? An another nice thing about being in a relationship now is that uh, me and my girl, we're both vegan. I, s I told you I'm going to tell you that, and now I'm telling you. <laughs> a lot of people aren't down with that veganism. You're always like, oh, what is that? Uh, any vegans in the house? Let me just do a check. Vegans, where you at? Okay, too hungry to shout, but I see you. <laughs> That's fine. Give that sister some chips or something, please. Um, <laughs> now I know, where, meat eaters, where you at? Meat eaters, make noise. <laughs> yeah! Woo! You smell that meaty breath in there, did you smell it? Meat eaters, oh, I love meat eaters, bruh. Meat eaters will fight you. Arr, we love our meat, <laughs> Don't take my meat away from me. Oh, no, it's, it's cool. I, I, I like meat eaters. I don't even have to ask sometimes who's a meat eater. I can just tell. <laughs> sometimes I can just tell, you know, because you always have shiny lips. <laughs> That's uh, your attributes, meat eaters attributes, shiny lips and high blood pressure. Yeah, high blood, yeah. Yeah, no one likes that high blood pressure line. No one ever likes that one. Everyone, you know, every time you hear some news about diabetes, high blood, people say, no, uh -uh, no, not us. It runs in the family. It's a... <laughs> Did you ever hear that line, bro? It runs in the family. Do you oh, no, guys, sometimes you need to go run in your family. <laughs> eat some vegetables, change the genes, you know? <laughs> runs in the family, guys. I don't know, I, I had to change. I, I did some research and, you know, found out that's the way. Stuck to it. Vegan, yeah, I am. And you know, sometimes meat eaters just don't understand. I was talking to this one girl, you know, at the party. She found out I'm vegan. She said, really? Then her whole face changed. She said, hi, shame. <laughs> <laughs> she, she said, but now, what do you eat? <laughs> Very abrupt. I was like, okay, sister, I'll explain. You know, don't calm down. I said, I eat vegetables, fruits, Carbs, rice, pasta, and grains, that type of thing. I broke it down to a nice slimmer. And then she was thinking, you know, like, okay, okay. She got all scientific with me. She's like, but now, brother, where do you get your protein from? 
Where do you get your protein from? Do I look like Arnold Schwarzenegger? <laughs> Firstly, never mind that Arnold Schwarzenegger is vegan, in fact. Do you know this? You should go ask him where he gets his protein from. <laughs> That's a weird question, though. Firstly, let me tell you something. Protein is not the most important thing in your diet. This is one thing that I found out through becoming a vegan. You actually learn more about what your body needs. Protein is actually, it's, it's everywhere in grass. Cows are the middlemen of protein. Did you know that? Animals are the middlemen of protein. So this whole protein thing is unnecessary. Your body needs more iron than protein, if anything, just to settle the bill. <laughs> Can I settle the bill on that? Your body needs more iron than protein. So this protein question, that's why when that girl asked me, I was like, okay, I told her where I get my, I was like, kidney beans, you know, peanuts, broccoli. I gave her a whole list. Then I said, okay, sister, you asked me where I get my protein from. I, I, I'm now I'm going to ask you a question. Let me ask you something. Do you know, sister, where do you get your zinc from? Do you know where you get your... She was like, yeah, Boulder's Warehouse. <laughs> it's not... It's not the same zinc, guys. Can someone please explain? <laughs> mm -mm. It's not the same zinc. It's very worrying. People don't know all this information. People don't know this. But sometimes you might just be nice and just tell them, you know, this is really what it is. Sometimes, like, you know what's confusing about veganism? I met a fat vegan the other day. Overweight vegan. I don't want to say fat like if people get, you know, but I felt like, you know, someone's lying in the room. Because <laughs> I was, he was breathing heavy, you know. <gasps> yeah, well, yeah, I'm vegan too. I'm like, bro, did you start yesterday? Because... <laughs> If you did, I'm proud of you. I'm very proud that you are changing some things in your life, you know? That's mad, you know, people, all these con conversations about what's better for you, what's, I think, do what makes you happy, guys. Just do what makes you happy, man. Veganism, I found that that works for me. It may not work for you, may not work for that brother over there. He might eat beans and he starts itching. <laughs> he can't eat beans, you know, that, that, that's your own thing. You know, everyone has their thing. Some people don't eat gluten. There's all these Aryans also nowadays, vegetarian. There's a new one even called flexitarian. Have you heard of that? Flexitarians, apparently they eat meat and veggies. <laughs> Guys, that's a normal human being. You're not, you can't put a title on something like, now nah, I'm, I'm flexitarian. I eat both. No, people are trying too much. Meat eaters also, and sometimes it's very confusing. When I was still in a relationship, I found myself, you know, meat eater relationship, I found myself doing weird things like going to the aquarium and then afterwards you go to an uh, ocean basket. <laughs> it's very weird. I, I, I don't understand sometimes the logic behind it, you know? But the best thing is that I've learned that you can grow your own. Isn't that cool? Grow your own. I know uh, a lot of us are still looking for the land to grow our own. <laughs> But while you can, you can start. You know, I got some tomatoes, some chilies. You know, it's not a lot, but it's something, you know. But meat eaters, you are in trouble because, you know, I dare you to try and grow a whole lamb on a balcony. <laughs> That's very difficult. That's very difficult. Ve yeah, man. Even the social media, is, uh, it's a bit wild nowadays, huh? Social media, anyone here on Facebooks and the things, Instas? Whew. I feel like nowadays, man, we must rather just leave our phones, just leave it, because phones get you in trouble these days, guys. Phones, as soon as you take it out, it, someone will try to grab it and run, you know, that's... Or even you take it out and you type something terrible, now you're in trouble, you know? Like, just put the phone, calm down, stop taking that selfie that you like so much, you know? Because I personally feel that social media is spying on us. Don't you feel like that? I feel like they're listening, like there's a guy in your phone listening, okay, right? He's talking about testing rice now. All right, time to put a sale on the rice. Let's show him rice, show him, flood him with adverts about rice. Do you ever feel like, like when you talk about something and then you see it suddenly, the ads pop up on your phone, is that just me? That's weird, right? I feel like they're listening, man. Because I wanted a bicycle a few months ago. I was talking to my friends about bicycles, talking about how much I want a bicycle. I really want a bicycle. And then suddenly I open my Instagram and bicycle sales, but not like bicycle, whole bicycle. They'll just put like parts. <laughs> they'll, they'll have like a Tuesday special on pedals. <laughs> what am I gonna do with the pedals on its own? Then the Wednesday special on handlebars. Like, why do you want me to put my own bike together? What's up with this? 
But then I found out, I figured it out, guys. I figured out the algorithm. I figured out they, they were, you know, tapping the phones. So I started changing my conversation. Started talking more about land. <laughs> Gotta be smart. I was, and I would make it known, you know. Just unnecessary land, 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 land. I'll just sing it close to my phone. Land, land, land. Can you hear me? Land, land, land. That's what I want, some land. Liggity, liggity, land. Hello, is this land? Hello, land, land. <laughs> Your land, my land, our land. I was just, that was me for a, the longest time, guys. One month into it, not one property ad, not one. I don't know who's listening, but can you please help me out? The closest thing I got was a take a lot ad for a tent, guys. That's not... It's not the kind of property I'm looking for exactly. <laughs> uh, uh, man, I want a permanent residence. Land is a real thing, guys. Everyone's moving in on the land, bro. Everyone's moving in on Africa. China's getting closer. The West been here. China's next. You know, they're popping up all over the show. You see the Chinatowns and all that. I, I, you know, personally, I'm into uh, Asian cuisine, you know. Yeah, uh, man. I'm into it. I love me a Chinese restaurant, guys. Have you ever been to one? You, you, love, you love your Chinese restaurants? Oh, man, I love me a Chinese. Guys, last time I was at a Chinese restaurant, I went all out. I had on my Chinese hat. I wore my Chinese robe. I even had on a pair of Chinese Jordans. It was tough times. It was tough times. There was Chinese music playing in the background. You know that song? That ding, 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 ding. <laughs> but it was a funky version though, so I was jamming with ding, 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 ding. Ni hao, ni hao. Ding, 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 ding. Shi, 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 shi. Ding, 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 ding. I'm chilling, right? My chi is balanced, guys. <laughs> And as I'm sitting there, right, and I'm feeling relaxed and I'm feeling good, I look at the door and suddenly this group of people run in, right? But they were loud, they were waving flags around. I think they came from beer yoga or something. I don't know where exactly, but, you know, I was watching them and they started disturbing me, messing with my chi, you know what I mean? So now I start judging them. You know? What are these people going to order? Do they even know what to order? Do they know about Chinese culture? Do they know what to order in an authentic Chinese restaurant? So I start watching them, looking at their orders. You know what they ordered, guys? They ordered burgers. <laughs> They ordered burgers at a Chinese restaurant. Guys, I was so upset. I was so furious that I finished my pizza and I left. I said, this is... <laughs> mad times, mad times, man. But you know what, I, I've, I heard about this thing um, called minimalism recently. You guys know about that, minimalism? Yeah man, I heard there's this thing called minimalism. I, I, um, someone told me about it, you know, they said you must try out this new minimalist thing. I'm like, okay, nah, leave me, I'm still, you know, I'm getting into life, you know, 33 now. I'm slowly learning all these new things, you know, how to balance out the too much from the too little, you know? And minimalism is very simple. You, all it means is that you just declutter, unclutter, take things out of your life that are unnecessary. It's not a fancy schmancy thing. It's just very simple. If you know, like, uh, the, the founder of the saying of, or the, you know, gatekeeper of minimalism, Marie Kondo, you know, she, she t coined the phrase, you need to throw things on the ground, right? This is what you need to do. Uncl all your clutter, throw it on the ground, and one by one, you pick it up. And you look at it and you say to yourself, does this thing bring me joy? And if it brings you joy, you hold it closer to you. And if it doesn't bring you joy, 
you pass it on to someone who it may bring joy to. You know what I mean? And I was like, that's a beautiful thing, you know? But I feel like South Africans, we, we could do with some minimalism, you know? As a country, you know? I feel like we just need to start taking things like ESCOM, you know? <laughs> and asking, do they bring us joy? Because <laughs> right now, they're not even bringing us power. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> South Africans, we could do with some minimalism, you know what I mean? You know, does this bring me joy, man? A lot of things, like, people asking me now, I'm 33 years old, people asking me, when are you having kids? I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Have you seen the world right now? Have you seen the mess the world's in? When are you having kids? Slow down. I don't, like, I don't even understand how people just rush that on you. Like, you, you're 30 now, when are you having kids? How's about, do you have kids? Then I can go, yes or no. But if you ask, when are you having kids? Now I have to give you a date. Uh, <laughs> September, I don't know. Where, yeah, no, 21, I don't know. 20, never, how's about that? Why do you ask, when are you having, why do you ask, when? Or what is it in, what's in it for you, huh? Did you open up, you open up a nursery school recently? <laughs> are you an au pair, is that why you're asking? Why do people ask, when are you having? I don't think, no, I, leave me alone, I'm fine. <laughs> don't ask me about kids right now, when are you having kids? I'm cool, man, you know? I don't even think it's a good time to be having kids, bruh. You can't be having kids during global warming, guys, you know? While the Amazon is burning, you out here having kids. It's no, that's not a good look. Kids, I feel like if I do that, my kids are gonna come out like Greta Thunberg, you know Greta Thunberg? Some of you know Greta Thunberg, the half of you don't. She's the time person of the year this year, isn't she? Time little person of the year, but the big person, right? Greta Thunberg, she t she's a little girl that went to the UN and she was like, how dare you? That was her words, how dare you? That's what she told them. And because she told them, uh, because it's getting hotter on earth, you know, she was like very, and I was scared of Greta, you know? Greta, Greta looks like she can get the job done, you know? So I don't want my kids, you know, to be turning out like Greta. That's very, that's a bit too aggressive, you know. I don't want no Greta Thunberg kids, you know. What if I want to get busy with my wife one day and in she bursts through the door, poof, how dare you? Get out, get out. I, I'm going to make breakfast now, get out. <laughs> the only confusing thing I find about Greta Thunberg is that like, they let the, a little girl speak, right? That's, that's all good. Little, little young girl. But how come they never let any indigenous voices speak? Uh, that's, that's my only thing. Like, you never see... They always silence the people with feathers in the head. Like, you, you notice that? But a little girl can get all the airtime and person of the year. But let a Khoisan brother just stand there now and say, it's getting hot out here, it's getting hot. <laughs> They'll put that bra on a boat, go, go, go where it's cold, go where it's cold. It's very different for us. Some of you don't want to laugh, that's how it goes. That's <laughs> very different. Isn't that weird? It's like this whole crime thing, the whole crime thing. One lady said, they must all go rot in jail. All these criminals must go rot in jail. I said, have you seen jail, sister? Have, you, have, you, have any of you ever like, seen a documentary of jail? Every time you see a jail documentary, there's always guys working out, doing pull-ups and chin-ups and running around the block. They're, everyone in there is getting stronger. I don't think anyone's rotting in there. No one is rotting. They're having steak brides on a Saturday. Who's rotting in jail? That's all I'm asking. And then the most ironic thing of all is that, just think of this. This is not even like a joke, right? This is real talk. All of us here, when we go out here to our cars and tonight, we are at the disposal of danger, left, right, center, right? Basically means we have no security. When we go out here, we have no, we are securityless, right? But these guys who do all these heinous crimes and things, do you, do you ever realize when they lock them up, they send them to maximum security? What's up with that? How come they get maximum security and we have no security in here? Like, is that just me? Is that just me? I don't know. I don't know how this world is set up anymore. <laughs> I'm saying we need to get to that minimalism, man. We need to get to that minimalism, that point where we just say, 
does this bring us joy? You know? That's how we find balance. That's how I think we find balance, man. Because if you don't, you snap, you know, like JMP. You end up being a JMP. You don't want to be a JMP, man. Because I snapped once just for, for a different reason. You know, I'm very politically inclined. And one day, um, I went wine tasting with my girlfriend. Any of you been wine tasting? Woo! Mm-hmm, I heard that. Yeah, wine tasters in the house. The rest of you are just religious. You're just going to just sit there. Okay, I see you. I see you. That's fine. Now, I went wine tasting, guys. And um, I was inexperienced at the thing, sister. I didn't really know how to do it. I was new. I didn't know what the procedure was, you know. They give you a glass with wine. And all I saw was everyone standing like this. That's the first thing you must know. <laughs> Apparently, you have to stand like this. No, you have to shake, stir, let it air, let it breathe. You have to let the wine breathe, you know. So now I'm there standing with them also. Okay, all right. <laughs> and then there's a voice from the back going, no, you have to smell the wine, brother. Smell it. Smell. Okay, okay, I'm smelling. You know. I don't know what I'm smelling for, guys, but I'm smelling now. And then I hear another voice. Now, what do you smell, guys? Now there's a test I didn't firstly study. I did not study a single day for this test. But now I'm being tested. What do you smell, brother? Now the pressure's on. I have to make, some, I have to make something up. Think quick, think quick. Is that lemon? I smell lemon. Um, I smell dishwashing soap. Is that sunlight dishwashing soap? Can I get a new glass, please? I don't think that's a... And then they brought me a clean glass, you know, they brought me a new glass. Sorry, sir, about that. No, here's a new glass, you know. They gave me my new glass. They said, now you have to taste, brother, you have to taste. You know, so I'm, yeah, okay. But now the first thing you must know is, you must just num 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 and two into the bucket. Hmm? You must num num and two into that bucket right there on the side, right? But guys, I paid so much for that thing. I, I hit it like a tequila shot on a Saturday night. Ah! <laughs> I even did that, ah, Ooh, they were like, what do you taste, brother, what do you taste? I said, I taste the strength, ooh, it's strong. Oh, is that a 19%, I know, is that a 19? <laughs> I'm feeling lightheaded, I'm feeling lightheaded already, is that a 19? <laughs> the brand knew, he knew I wasn't, I wasn't serious, he knew, he could tell. But then I remembered you have to, there's a question you have to ask. It's a very important question, you know. And I remembered it at the right time. It saved my whole experience, but also kind of ruined it. It took it a bit down, you know. And I was like, brother, excuse me, brother. I just need to know. What year was that wine produced, brother? What year? Please do inform me more about the year, you know. And then he got proud. He said, oh, good question, brother. <laughs> he held the bottle up there. Got all proud, you know, put his best voice on. He said, this bottle right here, brother. Is a Cabernet Sauvignon Blanc, 1976. Mm. And then I'm standing there, I'm thinking, yo, 76? <laughs> I wasn't even born in 76, guys. <laughs> but I know what happened, you know? And then suddenly all the memories, I'm starting, I'm thinking of the Slavery Museum, I'm like, oh, 76, that was a rough year for my people, bro, why didn't you, why did you give me this wine? In fact, please tell me what month, brother, what month, <laughs> what month was this wine produced? Please, I, I'm not very happy about it. He said June, I said, two, two, two. How, you, why didn't you tell me, please, just, just give me this, brother, what day, I just need to know, what day, was this wine produced? He said the 16th of June, 1970. Guys, I took that wine, I threw it like a Petro Bonfuzak. <laughs> Started singing on the spot, Senzelina, Senzelina, Senzelina. I lost it, guys, I lost it. He was like, brother, calm down, there's other people around. I said, brother, don't talk to me like that. You gave me a racist wine. <laughs> I said, I can still taste the shackles in that wine. <laughs> he tried to call me, he said, brother, what can I do? How can I help? I said, bring me something after 94. <laughs> he said, why? I said, I want that free wine. I still had to pay though. 
You have to pay, man. You can't just be reckless out here, you know. Because I know my limit. I know, you know, how, how to balance out things, when to give, when to take. You, that's all, that's what life is all about, guys. And that's all, that's what I want to share with you guys mostly, man. Just know the balance. Moderation, you know. Moderation is everything. I'm vegan, but, you know, I also do some things that are not so healthy. I'm not going to talk about them. <laughs> but moderation, moderation, guys. And I think it's very important, especially in a time like this, we need to keep sane. I think more important than anything, just keep sane because we are in for a roller coaster, you know. But as long as we stay level-headed, we can work things out amongst ourselves. Don't you think so? Yeah. You know, there's better ways forward, man. It's like the reason why I went vegan, uh, vegan is because I found out that it's a healthier way forward. So I went, okay, let me do that. And also it made me happy, you know. So that's all that I want to share with you guys, you know. And I want to leave you with a quote by Albert Einstein. Huh? Albert Einstein himself said, Life is like a bicycle. In order to keep your balance, you have to keep moving. Ladies and gents, I hope that you keep moving and stay balanced. I'm Ambrose Jude, and thank you and good night. Hey, this is Ambrose Yurin. Thanks so much for listening to my show. If you're keen on supporting or contributing towards me and my content, please click on the link provided. And if you're unable to contribute, no worries, no worries. Please share, tell your friends, and join me on my social platforms. I'll see you there. Peace and love. <laughs>